This episode of the Better Every Shift podcast is sponsored by Columbia Southern University. Learn more about how you can earn an affordable, accredited quality degree 100% online at columbiasouthern.edu slash fire. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Better Every Shift podcast. My name is Aaron Zamzo. I am a fire lieutenant. I also write for Fire Rescue One. And I'm very, very happy to be here and be the host of this show. But I am not alone. I'm with the commander, as I like to call her, Janelle Fosquets, who is the editor-in-chief of Fire Rescue One. And Janelle, how are we today? Doing great. Doing great. How are you, Aaron? I'm I'm good. You had to overcome some obstacles to get here, power off, you know, wa- water shut down, but you are dedicated to the program, dedicated to getting better, which is what we're going to talk about today. Today, we're already smarter because of our, our guest who is going to help us a little bit on the education side, but he's a very smart and well-educated man himself. Chief Keith Pageant is here from Columbia Southern University. Welcome, Chief. Thanks, Aaron. And the commander. I appreciate it. Glad to be here. It's, it's, it'll be an interesting conversation, I can tell already. <laughs> well, probably it has been already behind the scenes. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're all about, you know, obviously the theme is, is better every shift. And um, on a couple of uh, podcasts, I've talked about I'm going back and attending Columbia um, Southern University myself and uh, having a, a, I'm actually really enjoying that whole process. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But but your kind of path to get to where you are, I mean, you, you, you're a retired fire chief, fire marshal from Fulton County uh, Fire Rescue in, in Atlanta. You have served on numerous boards, one being a specialty education board member for the IFC Executive Fire Officer Program. You've been a section chair of the Professional Development Higher Education Subcommittee, as well as your director at large board member for the IFC's Safety, Health, and Survival Section. You've, um, you're a current co-chair of the Fire and Emergency Services Higher Education EMS curriculum. You currently are also the Fire EMS Academic Program Director with Columbia Southern University um, within the College of, of Safety and Emergency Services. You also have some degrees and a lot of different uh, training yourself. I mean, where does this start for you? Where does this passion for education begin? You know, um, I think all firefighters, as they go through their career, they get training and we get certifications like fire officer one or fire officer two or firefighter one and two. And that could be pro board or IFSAC or whatever, MPQ, whatever it might be. But at some point, I realized I needed to advance my career to the next level. And uh, you mentioned Fulton County. And when I was with Fulton County, the police department uh, required an associate's degree to come in the door. And that was because they wanted that uh, that writing ability uh, to be able to articulate that that incident they had responded to and, and document that. And I thought that was pretty neat. Uh, had a fire chief that came along uh, about midway through my career and, and was really pro education. And I, uh, I ended up going to a local college that had a satellite location that was close to Atlanta. Uh, they were in Rome, Georgia, but they had a satellite again in the, in the metro Atlanta area. Went down there uh, in the evening after work. You know, we had a Tuesday night class and then a uh, like a Thursday night cohort group that would get together. And I, uh, I finished my um, business management associate degree, uh, which is wonderful. I mean, I, and it's, it's kind of funny. I got all the way to the end. I wasn't really sure what program I was in. I was just taking classes. <laughs> You know, and and then uh, I ended up with a business management, which was great. Uh, and then I um, uh, I ventured into the online piece by uh, happenstance. I uh, had a, a friend of mine, um, Bob Dubay, who was uh, I think the last fire chief's job. He's retired now. Was he was the fire chief in Alexandria, Virginia? And Bob and I were members of the um, uh, safety, health, and survival section. And we were at dinner one night and he said, I, uh, I'm finishing up my bachelor's. And I said, really, where at? And he said, uh, another university. And um, we, um, we kind of got to more and more talking. And he says, they allow me to transfer in my EFO into their master. I'm sorry, into the degree program, the bachelor's program. And I thought, how cool is that? So I reached out to that school, uh, was able to get some credit for that. And uh, that kind of kept me in that next role. 
Uh, so I finished my undergraduate bachelor's degree in a fire administration degree program. And then I rolled right into the, uh, a master's program and uh, in fire as well. And, you know, it was fire executive leadership and disaster management. I want to make sure that that's correct. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, and I, I never would have dreamed I went that far in education, but it, it's been, a, it's, I got enjoyed it. And then the online piece made it really easy for me to accomplish that because if it was two in the afternoon or two in the morning, you know, I could sit down and, and do some work, take care of it. And then the, the, the collaboration sessions, it was, it was good stuff. And so your um, bachelor's and master's, did that come after your EFO and your CFO? Well, um, it was during, because, you know, at that time, the legacy program was EFO was four years. So I, I, I uh, and there wasn't a degree requirement to get into EFO at that time. So I was able to kind of get in the, in the side door, I guess, and, uh, and started through that journey. And that's, and I, I tell everybody, I said, sometimes I said, it got a little, got a little busy with trying to write uh, applied research projects and that, that essay or, or project at, um, at, at the university that I was attending at that time. So it, it got pretty busy, but um, was able to get it done. And uh, a lot of it kind of crossed over too, because, you know, it was all about fire and, and the industry and some of the topics kind of blended too. So that was good stuff. I could tell you my, my first question, and there's a, there's a little bit of, of, this is a personal question because I just experienced this, but I, I'd like to see kind of what your, your um, experience with transitioning, like the first, do you remember it's taking your first class online? How, what was it for you? Like, was it challenging for you or did you say this just matched the way that you learned? Well, I, I will say that you have to pay attention to instructions. I mean, it's not like you're in the room and you can raise your hand and say, Hey, look, you know, can you explain this? Or you have to kind of, you know, so you have to kind of read the instructions and, uh, and make sure you're on point. Uh, but you can, you know, you could email your, your professor or do an instant chat or some kind of messaging system, you know, um, ask the professor is in Blackboard. That was one of the learning management systems that we use. So um, that's that's handy. But yeah, I mean, but that's another skill that you you become pretty good at. You know, following instructions and making sure you're 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 capturing all that information and how you apply it. And you know, it's just a skill that you learn along the way, which is not in the curriculum. It's just a thing that you have to apply on your own. It's yeah. I, I I like it too. Um, compared it to when I was studying for uh, trying to get promoted to officer, you know, learning, and I, I shouldn't say necessarily learning, but, you know, going to school, taking tests, writing papers uh, is a skill. And if you don't use it, you kind of start to lose it. And it was yeah. like kind of dusting off, right. Uh, holding yourself accountable to a schedule, you know, you know, when you're at school, there's all these distractions, but at least, you know, I physically got to go to a class when it's online, you, you know, you, you have to just set aside that time and say, Hey, this is, I, I have to attend a, a lecture here and there. I have to make sure that I'm writing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm now in the groove. I'm, I think it's my seventh or eighth class. I can't, I'm almost 50% done, but it just, like you said, it just keep going with it and you kind of find your, your, your groove with it. Um, and so with this, how old were you when you started and how old were you when you finished through that whole journey? That's a good question. Um, I would say approximately 36, maybe. And um, um, early to mid 40s, I would say the, you know, I, I'm thinking five or six years total for 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 all of it, uh, because I was able to, like I mentioned, I was able to transfer in some um, some EFO and some other classes. And I, I know we'll talk about transfer credit in just a little bit so we can. You know, some of the, some of that life learning experience and transfer credit that you, you know, I accomplished that before I ever walked into a classroom in, in, in school, in, in college level, in higher ed. So I was able to, to apply some of that credit along the way. So that, that kind of compacted and, um, you know, got me got me along pretty quick. How did you manage life on, on the side of that? <laughs> That's funny that you mentioned that because one of the things that CSU is, that, and I'm sure you're aware, one of our courses or our, our course format is called life paced learning mm -hmm. because we do realize that, um, you know, we're busy. we got a lot of things going on. You, you just mentioned, you know, you, you're a lieutenant, you, you're, you're trying to go to school, uh, whether it's wife and kids and 
ball games or dance dance recitals or whatever you know you have to kind of navigate through all that to make sure that you can get the school work done and make sure it happens and, you know and um I, I, it's kind of it's kind of ironic how we're talking about podcasts and everything too and here today i, I listened to jocko willink and he talks about discipline is freedom i don't know if you if you listen to him and mm-hmm. talk so yep. discipline you got to be kind of disciplined you got to you got to manage your own life and work and put those those times those hours or those minutes together and make it all come together so uh uh you know you got to say uh, look i got um got the kids are in the bed uh I'm, i've uh, i've put the phone away uh, I'm done for the day, and now I need to work on this essay, and uh, and knock that out, and and that's when you kind of get focused. Maybe it might be at, again ten o'clock at night, or it might be two in the morning. It's kind of yeah. like the same as trying to carve out time to work out, right, Aaron? It's like you have to like yeah. find a way to like just schedule it into the day, because yeah. really you're the only one. You know, we have to be accountable to someone, and that's ourselves in these situations, mm-hmm. right? And that's been the theme uh, the last couple of kind of months on the podcast is just, you know, accountability, personal accountability, you know, building resilient, building just your systems, right? Your, the way that you do things every single day. And Janelle, I love you because you, you, you you've got me trained there and you've got me yeah, trained. This is great. Cause you know what I do, honest to God, I'll sit on the bike and I'll read my lesson plan or my lessons. Oh yeah. And, and, and I bought, um, I actually bought a used iPad or I like a, a notebook, you know, electric notebook. And that's, I log into my portal to my black book and, or my, my blackboard. And then I'll read my lessons and my, I, my text there. And then I'll um, typically after I get done with a 30 minute bike ride or walk, um, you know, I, I have enough energy to then answer questions and do that. And to me, I'm, I'm multitask and, and it was, it kills two birds with one stone. I just, it, it's a really cool feeling once you start to figure those systems out. But, you know, like Janelle said, it's a matter of, do you want to just go and surf online at night at eight 30 once the kids are in bed, or do you want to go walk on the treadmill and learn a little bit and make yourself better? And I think it's, it sounds, doesn't it sound simple when I say it that way? Yeah. Yeah. I think you've got that discipline thing worked out. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's not easy, but, um, you know, to the, to anybody listening who says I don't have time to, to, you know, figure this into my life. I, I, I think we could, we could really, in most cases argue that and say, how much time do you study on the Insta waste or whatever the, the <laughs> fart? Sure. I don't, I can't remember what these things are called, the tactic or the FaceTime or whatever it is, um, that everybody, uh, you know, absorbs themselves in it. You see it in firehouses a lot, but if you're on those things for 30 minutes. Instead, you could be learning for 30 minutes a day and apply yourself to get a degree, to get in shape, uh, to, to improve. And, and I think that's really, you know, what the essence of going back to school has been for me was how, how are you using your time? And it's really forced me to, to look at yeah. that. Um, any other suggestions? Like if somebody's listening and is right now thinking they don't have time, what else w- would you say to that chief? You know, it, it, we're talking the fire service and, you know, the, the National Fire Academy put the, the education model, the professional development model together. And then I always refer to it as like the pyramid. And you got training on one side, professional development and education on the other side. And as you're going along, you're, you're accomplishing fire officer one, fire officer two, four, whatever it might be. And then you're also working on your associates or your or your bachelor's up to your master's, maybe even to your doctoral level, you know, your doctorate in emergency management or something like that. Uh, but, uh, and also the certifications, I think we talked briefly before we got online about, you know, chief fire officer designation from the CPSE, you know, just building all those things together, setting those long-term goals and then kind of just chipping away at them, you know, to get that certification, that designation to knocking out a degree or, a, um, you know, um, if you want to go back and be an instructor in EMS or fire, it might be that MPQ or pro board, just accomplishing and putting all that together to, to make you that well-rounded chief officer or whatever you might want to be EMS director, whatever it might be. Were you always good at school? Like it, does this come naturally to you no, in terms of like organization? Not. No, no, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> well, I think that could be very inspiring for no, listeners to hear too. It's like I, I, this could be for anyone. And, and I need, and I, and I say this every once in a while, you know, we're, we're on social media and we see all of our high school people, 
you know, and when I was in high school, I remember there was like my homeroom teacher came around and she's handing out the SAT applications and she gets to me and she, and you know, she's almost hesitant as she hands it to me. She goes, Keith, do you want one of these? And her name was Miss Paul. And I, I'm hoping that I can find her at some point and say, hey, look, look at me. <laughs> you know, me know. <laughs> I, I don't mean that bad, but I mean, yeah. you know, I, because you know, she was, she, she understood. And I said, no, ma'am. I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to work. I'm going to go. And I, I walked in a fire station and got on a fire truck when I was 18 and I went to work. But at some point I realized to advance my career in that job, I needed to, I need to go back and, you know, either training and education. And it, it played a component in that, an element to advance my career on down the road. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that, that walk out of high school and go to, you know, a university, whether it's, you know, University of Georgia here and uh, locally or Auburn or Alabama or wherever it might be, but they, uh, and then they might end up in a, a full-time job. And then I look at the demographics in, in my program at CSU is about an average 35 year old that has been on the job 10 to 12 years. And then they realize that I've got to, I've got to turn it up a notch and go back to school. So they end up in school and then, and I, I, don't, I know we'll talk about it in a minute, but uh, that some of that transfer credit that they've, that they've stored away unknowingly happened over that 10 or 12 years as they were going up to their career. Cause I, uh, a, a quick little story is I had a, 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 a guy that I went to school with high school and uh, we ended up on the job together and he was, he was going for the deputy chief's position and he says, I'm going to have a degree. And he was kind of, and this is after I left, see, I mean, left Fulton County. And I said, well, you know, I said, you've got a lot of training over the years. I said, you're a paramedic. I knew you've been, I just started naming off certifications. He said, yeah. I said, well, let us evaluate that. And he said, oh, I said, send every, every, every certification, every certificate, everything that you've done. He called me, he said, oh my gosh, I've got 45 hours. And I said, it wasn't that easy. I said, I said, really, it wasn't because that's, that's, that's almost 20 years of, of training and education on the job that you've accomplished over those years that you can apply to a degree. So, you know, we slide him a math or a history or a critical thinking. He's in a degree program and knocks it out within about, you know, eight to eight to 12 months. I mean, he's done. And, and that, that's that eating that elephant one bite at a time. And he didn't even know he was at dinner. You know I mean? It, it worked out so right. well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I, I think that's, that's a huge part of this. I, I had a conversation with a, a, a colleague of mine about, you know, before I, I contemplated for a year going back and um, talking with him, he just said, you know, the light, light bulb went off on, w- one day when, you know, he had two little kids at home. And he said, Zam, when I started to just at 30 minutes a shift, you know, we in between calls or, or you know, at night when things kind of slow down, um, you know, when people kind of sit around and muck luck and tell jokes and stories. And, and you'll see it now a lot of times, like I was t- mentioned before in firehouses, everyone's in their phones. He said, I just went and I, I cranked out 30 minutes a day. Even if I was ahead in my schedule, I knew it was coming up, you know, which was one of the benefits of, of going online and knowing what, what your next um, unit or, or lesson is going to be. And he said, once I did that, he goes, I looked up and all of a sudden I was, I was in my last course. Like you said, it's, yeah. you know, it's slow and steady wins that race and, and you just start to build your, your success system for that. Um, you know, so people that are listening, I, I'll tell you, I'm 50 years old. I'm not very smart, as you probably have heard numerous times on this podcast, but applying that 30 minutes a shift, 30 minutes a day to bettering my education, I, I just, A, I feel there's just a, a level of satisfaction with it. And, you know, now I'm 50% done with my degree and I went, where the heck did the first part go? And, um, and so I believe anybody listening to this, you can do this. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and you guys have programs. Let's talk a little bit about like, you know, the cool part is with CSU, you do give a lot of credit for, uh, being a paramedic or, um, some sure. of the other kind of operations that we already have explain that, that process a little bit more. Well, you, that, you know, and you, you, do that. Sam, you hit on something that I really wanted to talk about too, is we put together an, uh, an associates and EMS about, about a year and a half ago. And we based that on the paramedic certification because we know that there's a lot of paramedics out there that that could could use a a a degree so when you walk in the door with your your certification as a paramedic you get 30 hours and then most likely as i said uh toward a 60 hour degree as i said there's there's probably other training and education that life experience that you've had along the way that will add to that 
So they normally got 40 plus hours easily when they walk in the door toward a 60 hour degree. And then they, they had to take some gen ed requirements and a couple of EMS EMS courses for that. And they're, they got their associates. I mean, we try to make it easy, easy, user friendly and apply that the training and education that they've already got from, from that lifelong career, you know, that they've already invested in their, you know, time and time and money and everything in their career right out of the bat, whether it's a, a, a career department or a volunteer department. So there can be a volunteer firefighter that has a paramedic certification, EMT, you know, we offer credit for that as well. So they can, they can come in the door and apply that to that degree, you know, and, and again, it's, it's not, um, it's not something that it's huge that they're having to work just, you know, three or four years to get, uh, they, they've, they've done a lot of it already. And I think, I think most people are surprised when they walk in that they, that they've got that kind of credit that they can transfer in. It gives them a lot of momentum going oh, yes. in and saying, Hey, all right, I already got this. And you know, and like I said, there's a transition when you first start and it's not, it's not easy. You guys aren't just handing these things out saying, Oh, you're a paramedic, take these two courses. I mean, you, yes. you do have to do some of the work, but a lot of the stuff, you know, I found I'm applying even the next day in certain situations and certain projects and trainings that, I, you know, delivered and, and even just working with people. And I imagine too, on the EMS side, right? This is stuff that you, you're, you're learning all the time regardless. So now let's yeah. put it into a format that's, um, you know, conducive to a degree. Um, so there's another reason for people to, to, uh, you know, start to pursue just this higher education. I, I'm, um, I'm glad you mentioned the the uh, projects and how you could apply it the next day because that's that's huge for me. When I go to uh, uh, Fire Rescue International or FDIC or some some of the big conferences, Firehouse Expo and everything, and and then I I, I go to those conferences to kind of go by the booth where we have outreach that you'll see them come by and they'll have they'll have all our information about the university. And I talk to alumni or students and say, hey, you know, tell me, tell me, tell me about your class. What, what, what class did you like the best? And the most likely in the fire, there's a there's a course that has simulation software in it. And it's a tactical level incident command type structured class. And of course, that's not writing an essay or a paper. <laughs> so that, that's something they can apply. And that we've tried to focus a lot on projects for our assignments throughout that where it might be uh, writing a policy or a, addressing an issue inside your department, your current department, that you can go, oh, man, I can apply that. Or I had that same incident last week, and not just writing case studies, case studies you learn a lot from, but after a while it can become a little boring. And I know that. So I think projects that, you know, that where you can truly apply your knowledge quickly. I mean, and again, like you said, it could it could be that next shift that you kind of go, hey, I learned that. I read that last week. So, uh, yeah. And then you can just use it that day. So that's that's huge. I, I, it's not something that that I, you know, because I, I do hear people say, man, I feel like I'm I, sometimes I'm caught up in the busy work. And I definitely don't want the person to think that that they're not actually learning something. They're just kind of turning out a, you know, a paper that nobody's going to read that nobody cares about. Well, I just have to nerd out for a second and say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I it's a little different in my world. I, you know, being on the media side of the house and the journalism side, but um, you know, I've taken some advanced, you know, like getting certificates. So I have a t certificate in technical communications, for example, and then uh, Lexpol is very uh, encouraging of all of us to continue to take. LinkedIn learning courses, anything that might apply. Mm -hmm. And I just think there's something unique about when, you, when you're when you studying or even just taking a single course, something in your mindset kind of shifts and you're kind of primed to see everything around you in a slightly different way. Because I feel that exact same way every single time I take a LinkedIn learning course. It's like whatever, it could be any topic, it could be a management related topic. Um, the, literally the next day, I am thinking, I am seeing ways to apply it, but it's also like your brain just kind of, your mindset is shifted and you're looking for these opportunities too. And it's, it's just so nice. It's just really rewarding to put it into action so fast. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Columbia Southern University offers one of the most reputable fire professional development degrees and training programs in the nation. Touted by some of the most distinguished names in the U.S. fire industry, CSU's fire science program was created to reflect the industry's latest practices, including administration, fire safety, investigation, leadership, and more. 
visit columbiasouthern.edu or call 877-347-6050 to learn more. Now, let's get back to the show. I was getting ready for to go for a battalion chief's job. And I and the uh, one of the questions was about classified and unclassified employees. And that goes back to the Pimbleton Act. And I think it was like 1892 or something like that. <laughs> and I walked in, sat down in the thing, and then we were, we were in front of the fire chief and he had given us like 10 questions. And, and, they, and, I, and I picked that question up and I went, oh, classified versus cla- unclassified, because when I moved in that battalion chief, it was going to change that my strength. And I said, oh, that's a Pimbleton, 1892. And his mouth fell open. Because <laughs> so, you just studied it, right? Like- I just, like two nights before. So it was, it was exactly what I needed to hear. So, that, you know, I always say that that was heaven sent. That was meant to happen. And I just like, and he was just like, what? And I, and I talked to the chief of staff after all that was over with, and he was in the room, you know, the, uh, the, the fire chief, chief of staff. And he says, man, he says, you killed it. He said, when you said that, he said, it blew him out of the water. And he says he was just so impressed. And he, he said he had his phone out trying to figure out if that was true or not. <laughs> <laughs> Fact checking you during yeah. your uh, during your, your interview. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, but I've I've seen two uh, kind of I've had two great interactions. One, I was on uh, w- with with CSU. You have to do discussions. So you read your your lesson and then you discuss with your classmates. And um, I I I just commented on someone who's who mentioned, yeah, they're a fire, fire chief and. I can't remember somewhere in Georgia. And I said, it's great to have another first responder here, blah, 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 blah. And, um, you know, they commented back and then they said underneath, love your podcast. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. But then, you know, it's a way to connect with, with like-minded yeah. individuals from the fire service. Um, and you'd mentioned applying one of my previous courses was research methods. And I've been doing a lot of studying on recovery and sleep. And I reached out to a professor and I said, I really want to do something on firefighter sleep deprivation and recovery. And they said, you go for it. And so instead of, you know, one of the, the assess, the assessments that we had to do, they allowed me just to to change it just a little bit to accommodate for that topic. And, you know, and I think that was a cool thing for them to embrace, to say, Hey, this is something that, that he's looking to apply. And, you know, we had touched a lot about it as you're, you're bettering yourself. And sometimes you feel, Oh, just another paper, there's another report, but you know, this, the secondary thing that's going on is you're learning how to write and yeah. you get into more leadership suggestions. You have to write all the time. Let's go back to your journey a little bit. Cause I want to know what's the biggest challenge you faced. Cause you said you were 36, you know, and you were in school for like, I think six, eight, 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, what was the biggest challenge you had there? I mean, you, you mentioned juggling all the different things, but uh, digging a little deeper, there had to be more than just that. Yeah, I was in a, I went from a, um, during that time, I went from a, uh, a captain in training to a division chief, uh, that was over a safety health and safety health section that was in, in our department. And then I, I moved into the fire marshal's office all in that time. Uh, so there was multiple promotions and then, um, uh, EFO, uh, the master's undergraduate bachelor's program. And, um, you know, I, I did a lot of a lot of a lot of studying, a lot of time online, uh, but I learned a lot along the way. And not and I, I keep saying I learned a lot that was not in the curriculum, too, because, I, as you mentioned, just learning how to write. Um, you know, I, I, when I was a lieutenant and I had I had just made just made lieutenant but, and had been assigned to a single engine company. And I had a, I had five firefighters and paramedics that worked under me. There was a rescue in the house, too. Um, there was a policy that we could change a policy in the organization. You know, if, if you didn't, if you didn't like that policy or it felt like it could be done better, you as a firefighter could have an opportunity to write that policy and it can go up the chain and it might happen. And I did that multiple times. And the reason I would do, I wasn't scared to sit down and get in front of the computer and write. And, and when I was a lieutenant and some of the guys and I, you know, and I, God love him, he would come in there and he would be crying and whining about that. I said, look, and I would print it off the paper. And, I mean, I would print it off the printer and hand it to him. You, I said, you can change it right here. And I knew he, he wouldn't. He wouldn't sit down and do it. And I said, you know, if, if you just take a little bit of time and jot down your points in a well-organized manner, I said, you can make a difference. And, and he wouldn't. 
I mean, and that's that's disappointing because he had good points, but he just he just he couldn't he couldn't write he wouldn't write and he knew it. But if he had took a little bit of time, he'd been he'd been very successful paramedic EMT, but he he just wouldn't apply himself beyond that. And well, there's I so much that, that happens separate from the actual courses itself, right? You're learning about writing, yeah. like you said, yeah. you're learning problem yeah. solving, critical thinking, all these things that aren't yeah. outlined. Yeah, in a curriculum, but they're just happening organically. That's that's right. Because I, I had a fire chief tell me one time. He says, you know, what we need is critical thinking problem solvers, and that's that's right. And a lot of our a lot of firefighters learn, learn that along the way, but they just need to learn how to apply it in different ways. And I, I think that's I think that that's something that you learn in school because it it could be me talking to Aaron, talking to the commander in San Diego, you know, just that. You know, we, we learn things. We, we got, oh, I hadn't even thought about that. And that either the cohort groups or the uh, collaborate, the discussion boards, meeting people around the country. It's not it's not all. And I, I, I'm online learning here. It's not all in in Atlanta where I went to school. We're not all from South Fulton County and all in one room because we're online. And I, I talk to people in Connecticut or, or Denver or, or Miami or whatever. And they, they tell me about different policies and then we network and we build that relationship and email each other and see each other at conferences. And it just expands. That's, that's, that's something that's not in the curriculum that you benefit from. I, I think you benefit from online learning. Well, I think most of the stuff we've talked about are the benefits uh, of online learning and just learning in general. I mean, we haven't really talked too much about subject matter at all because yeah. I'm doing entrepreneurship and you did, um, you know, a fire uh, services yeah. management, and you you did some uh, some other uh, different degrees. Janelle, of course, you've been you, your experience is different, but you know, as we come together, we're all like, well, yeah, you learn how to uh, articulate your um, kind of your point of view, and you can write, and you can research, and you can support that, which in your case can really help change an organization, change a policy, and you have to be willing to just take take a moment to to start writing. There's so many different tools yeah. online that will help you do that. Um, but let's talk a little bit about majors and let's talk about, um, you know, some of the things that you offer at, at Columbia Southern, as far as okay. like, what are the, some of the programs that you think our listeners, you know, um, it would be more fitting for our listeners. Before we move into that, I got one thing. We were at graduation this year and I'm sitting on the, the front row out uh, in front of the stage and the, the master's program, all of the all the masters graduates are going up, going across the stage, and they come back. And there was a lady that came behind me and sat down, and she was talking to the other one behind beside her. And she was, oh my gosh, I'm never writing another paper in my life. You know, like she she reached that pinnacle. And and I joked and I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna snatch that diploma away from you. I said, I want you to write and write and write, and do all kinds of research. I said, that's what you've done this for. <laughs> I said, I want you to contribute. I said, you know, whatever your degree is keep doing it. You're in that groove, you know? So yeah. it was, kind of, it was kind of funny, but I understand she was tired too. So yeah, but she's yeah. been very successful. So that's good. Uh, I, so back, back to your question at, at, uh, at CSU on the fire side, um, we have an associates in fire, the fire science, the, the entry level come out of the gate, uh, 60 hour degree. And then we move into an, a, another undergraduate, a, a bachelor of fire administration, which is kind of geared to toward that, company officer that's that's moving up in rank uh to um uh, to either a lieutenant or a captain to a battalion chief they're learning that administrative role uh they're but they're still they're still teaching uh firefighters and and driver operators younger younger company officers but they're learning in more advanced it could be studying human behavior in fire or um uh fire administration or building construction or uh, fire behavior and fire dynamics to modeling. Uh, it, it could be all of that in that degree program. And then one we rolled out about two years ago is uh, is a master's in fire executive leadership. And I, it's been the fastest growing program at Columbia Southern University. I mean, we're at over 200, 200 uh, students actively enrolled all the time. I mean, that's that's a that's a phenomenal at a master's level. And it's, it's just really taken out. And then um, on the fire side, again, there's uh, there's something that we just have we just have began work on. And that's a doctorate in fi advanced fire theory and sustainable resilience. So that we mm -hmm. just have started that down that road of the doctorate degree. 
Um, uh, I've got seven courses that uh, some of our faculty at the um, uh, doctorate level are preparing to write. We just have kind of got that. We're using a little bit of the emergency management doctorate degree that we just have rolled out. I mean, it just has launched. Uh, we're, we're using some of that, and then we're writing about seven courses in, in FIRE. It can be anything from uh, a health class to uh, politics uh, to, um, oh my gosh, uh, just managing the organization overall. But it's it's not really, it, and I, I tell everybody, I said, it's not really a degree to get you to the fire chief's job. It's, it's the degree to get you beyond that. Because I believe the master's in fire executive leadership gets you that assistant or deputy chief's job or the fire chief's job. I think it gets you there. This one's going to be designed to help you solve problems in the industry. So I, so I, want, I want that person to go beyond and do research and contribute and then, and then beyond their career. So they, they, might, they might write, um, you mentioned about the sleep deprivation, you know, write on that. I mean, do research, expand on your research that you've already done. Just keep, keep going. But that's the, that's the student, that's the candidate, the prospect that we're looking for for that. Now, on the EMS side, we've got that. I mentioned it earlier, the uh, um, uh, EMS, uh, the associates in EMS based on the, uh, the uh, paramedic degree program. And then there's a, uh, an EMS administration, kind of along, right along the fire. It's meant for that director or um, paramedic or EMT that's moving into that, that administration, that supervisory role. Uh, so that, that, that to help them and, you know, there's, there's not a lot of that, there's not a lot of that out there. So that administration on the EMS side for, for private, the private sector, or, uh, even the, the fire and EMS, you know, combination, you know, EMS provider in that community, they need those administrators to, to manage that system. And then, um, uh, we have a couple of different concentrations. One is mobile integrated healthcare. And the other one is an EMS education concentration. And both of those have four classes that are in addition to your, um, you know, your EMS administration. And the EMS education is meant for that paramedic instructor that might, that, you know, is going to go beyond that teach EMTs and paramedics. And that's their, that could be their, their, uh, their job in the organization, or they might even have a, their own company that, that they, that they want to expand on and they need that background. And then you, you know, as well as I, the community paramedic and mobile integrated healthcare is, is a kind of a hot topic around the industry, you know, around the nation. So that's, that's a, that's a, that's the thing we're into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's only going to get bigger. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I think that and leadership, those have, those have been really popular um, topics within the show. And it's, it's really great to see and hear like, Hey, 200 people have already started this and have gone through this program. Oh, yeah. I, I think that'll just explode. And, you know, for somebody listening, going, well, why, we're firefighters. Why do we need this stuff? I think that's the one thing that we've been missing in the fire service. I know that the old school is, hey, man, you just put the wet stuff on the red stuff. And I think we've known now and we, we've at least kind of looked at, hey, with the way that, you know, data and technology have been readily available to us, that there's a lot more to just that now, uh, you know, than even, you know, with fire dynamics. But then you look at the people side, 80 percent of our time, 90 percent of our time is spent dealing with people and dealing with uh, EMS and to hear that a lot of your programs deal with that, um, I think is great because you're, you're now training us on things that we can use. And we you know, like this whole podcast has been talking about application of our education. And it sounds like you guys are in very good touch with that. What drives a lot of this? Uh, what drives a lot of your programs? Is it demand? Is it you know, your, your experiences, is it you just getting out there and pedaling and, and, and talking to, to people in the fire service saying, what do you guys need? You know, currently in EMS and fire combined, we're in that, in that area, we have about 60, 60 faculty that are around the nation. They're either EMS, you know, retired EMS directors. They might be currently working for the EMS department or their fire chiefs, assistant chiefs or deputy chiefs, either working or retired. And then we have an advisory board of, of industry leaders, I mean, I, we got some really great people that are that are involved with uh, our advisory board, and we we get together with them quarterly online because we bring them the we bring them the campus one time a year, but we we do it quarterly and we evaluate our courses and then we ask them say what's happening out there what's what's the hot topics you know what what should we what should we focus on and you know we just came out of out of COVID, a lot of our EMS courses of course of course changed. 
you know, you know, just different protocols, policies, uh, the way you handle different patients, everything, you know, it, that's, that was a whole curriculum rewrite, but we, uh, you know, we, we really rely on our faculty. It's a faculty driven piece, um, you know, through the, through the industry because they, they, many of them are still active. I mean, don't think that we have just retired people that are not, not staying current. You know, there's a professional development program that we follow and then you have um, you have people that are out there doing the job and learning from those people. Uh, I, I think the you know we always say you don't want to learn from a, a a pilot that has never flown a plane. So you want that you want that that person that has done the job and knows the job and knows the politics and knows how to write policy and and uh, and, and then down to the tactical level of fire behavior and building construction. So w- whatever it might be, you want to learn from those people. Mm-hmm. Well, and you're certainly right one for us to learn from on this. Do you think it gets easier as you go? You've done associates, bachelors, masters, EFO, CFO. Is it, does it get easier because you're also learning the process of learning? Essentially? Oh yeah. I, I, well, I won't say it becomes easier. You learn as you go along. And I, I always say, I said, oh my gosh, I wish I could go back and write all of my EFO papers over again, because I'm, I'm, I'm a, I won't say I'm ashamed, but I could have done such a much better job, you know, because I've learned a lot along the way. And uh, I remember Chuck Burkell was still in, still at, at the NFA then. And the last paper I wrote, uh, he put a comment on, he's like, hello, Keith. I mean, you know, just like, you finally kind of got your act together. <laughs> And, you know, I, and, but over those four years and four papers or, or three before that, I was I was learning. So, uh, yeah, I think the more you do anything, you know that you you practice and you learn from your failures and and you get better and better. Yeah. Well, and I think that's that's the other part. You know, we had mentioned that numerous times. I will say that when I wrote for um, my officer, I also forgot how to take tests. And it sounds so like when you hear yourself say that, you're like, that's dumb. But like learning how to take multiple choice tests, learning how to write reports, learning how to write your point of view. If you don't use that, you it, it becomes more and more yeah. difficult to start. But once you get it, it's like riding a bike, man. You just, yeah. you really can start to critique yourself and get better and better and better. And that's that's one of the reasons why I think anybody listening to this who doesn't think they need any additional education, I would say for two reasons. One, it will never, you, you will use it more than you ever know, number one. And number two, this is the last kind of point I'd, I'd love to kind of bring up and is it's recharged me from a standpoint of, I kind of was at a point in my career where I was stagnant. And you mentioned that, you know, your 36 year old is typically where you see people and that's about the 10, 11 year mark. And it's actually music to my ears to say that there's a, there's a large number of people that are saying, I recognize burnout. I need to take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. If somebody's at that point right now, listening to this, what would you say to that, Chief? I, you know, I think you you hit it. You, you know, you you need something fresh, a new approach, a new picture, a new view of of your of your job. And I think I think that applies to, to training and education. You know, it's just like uh, any time that you open a new um, a tool or or something at the job, you're interested in it. So I, I think that goes to higher education as well. You open that book and, it, and it's a whole new light. Uh, and then you and then the networking piece again. I always say that you'll learn from from somebody in San Francisco or somebody in Miami. And then you can, you know, and just just learning from those people and getting to network with those is, is a huge deal. So I, I think that that's refreshing. And it's not just all in your in your department. Uh, you learn from so much and then you can take that back and use it in your organization. So I, 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 I that's me. I, that's, that's what I think. I just love the networking piece. Well, it all goes to the points back to getting better. I've said it yeah. six, probably this is the seventh time, um, which is why we are so thankful to have um, you and Columbia Southern uh, supporting what we're doing here and trying to do with the Better Every Shift podcast. Thanks so much for the insight, but you're not done yet. We have okay. some more personal questions. We like to throw people in the hot seat where we don't tell you what questions we're going to ask. Janelle usually comes up with a great theme and uh, has some good ones for you. So I'm going to let her start with uh, the um, first one. I'm nervous. He's sweating. I can tell. <laughs> you can tell. He's beet red sweating. All right. We're going to start with the hardest one then. Okay. 
<laughs> what's the, what do you think is the biggest challenge or one of the biggest challenges facing the fire service today at the moment um i think keeping you know i know this is this is way out there different i think keeping people in the fire service i i, I hear all the time they said oh we had them here and then they left and went somewhere else or we had we just lost four or five and then in the metro atlanta area i see so many departments you can just tell it's almost competitive they're trying to get the the best people they can get so they offer phenomenal packages but their people are leaving the industry going somewhere else i don't know how that retention piece happens uh, you know i know that's it doesn't sound like a technical question or or but i I think that's difficult. I'd hate to be a fire chief and know that I needed to have 16 engines and four trucks on the road. And then, um, and then I can't keep paramedics because they're going somewhere else or going to the private industry to do something. I think it's, I think that's a, that's a challenge. I, the, a staffing and, and keeping people in the department right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. huge challenge. Yeah. yeah. The retention piece definitely, uh, was a big issue that we, when we tackled in the What Firefighters Want survey, and so many people responded that it was a big issue at their departments as well. Not only, you know, recruitment, but the retention piece as well. And staffing ended up being one of the biggest challenges. Um, it was the most stressful aspect of the job. Well, you know, like service. I said, I think it's the fire chiefs are trying to make their place and that's my summer, outstanding packages, the, the preferred place to work. And, mm -hmm. and because they're trying to keep people, uh, I, um, uh, I've, I've got a, a younger, a younger guy that I mentor along, but he, he, he called me the other day. He says, Hey chief, what do you think? Where would be the best place in the world to work? And, and, the, and I, and I told him, I thought, Hey man, be, you know, you have an opportunity to go to Colorado or you can go to, you know, to, to Michigan, or you, you can go to Miami, you can go to a lot of different places and look at the pay. They're great pay. He's a paramedic EMT. He's got multiple certifications. I keep trying to get him to get into school, <laughs> but he's going to leave a, a good department that he's, that he's been with, I don't know, maybe three years. And then he was at another department about three years before. So he's moving along. Me, I came in a job. I spent 30 years there at that one place, you know, and I, and I, and I know the, the reason I stayed was because I'm in a defined benefit pension. So I was in an old, what we refer to as the old pension that kept me there. But if I had a suitcase 401, I might be in Colorado next week. Yeah. So I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think that that's a, that's a big challenge for a fire chief. Yeah. 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 That's another big theme. I think we have to think, I think we have to think, we have to just think period out of the box. And that's where continuing education, I think the, when you, yeah. when you learn a little bit, you start to look around at what possibly other industries are doing. And mm -hmm. we've, we've never done that. And God forbid I say that, but you know, um, everything from working conditions to shifts changing, you know, yeah. four shift is something that I think can not only be used to help improve our health, but as a recruitment tool for those departments that decide to do it. And so, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned um, yeah. that there's a lot of there's a lot of 2448 departments that are looking at a 4896 mm -hmm. because that's what their employees want. Yep. I, yep. I mean, I, you know, they're trying to adapt. Those those chiefs are looking for that. They're they're trying to think outside the box. Yeah. Yep. And typically, those chiefs are the ones that have the higher education. True. True. Yep. Good point. Um, so thinking about challenges here for you on a personal level, what's the biggest challenge you've overcome recently? Uh, some personal challenges, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I, I had, um, a, a couple of close deaths and, um, and, uh, that's, that's been pretty challenging. I know Janelle's familiar with that. So I, I you know, I, I know that's not topic right here, but that's, that's been challenging for me it, it hit home and, you know, and I, I guess it's, um, and the reason I even bring that up, I know it's not related to higher ed and everything like that. There's a lot of personal issues that affect firefighters across the nations. And, um, and you got to look at that. They bring that stuff to work with them too, you know, and, and it's been, it's been challenging for me. Um, but, um, you know, we've got to, I think company officers and chief officers need to take that into effect. I mean, into, into consideration to think that, um, 
Um, I, um, I, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought here. This just to think that there's something beyond the job. Mm-hmm. Then, then you, know, you got to think that they have personal life and a lot can impact that. Yeah. So, um, sorry, I, that, I know that went off. That's good. Off. No, but how, how are you doing with it? I mean, yeah. I, I'm sorry to I'm, hear. I'm it. good. Uh, it, I, I've, I've learned a lot in the last few years and, um, and, uh, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's tough, but I mean, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's part of life. That's all there is to it. You can't, you can't get around it. And, um, you know, you just kind of, you got to plow through that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and you see yeah. like how you don't necessarily, you're never going to be able to totally get rid of the stress, right. Of, yeah. of, you know, life, but you try to figure out a way to manage it. Kind of like your education, right? Like yeah. there's like, there's a huge yeah, correlation. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And hopefully have you, really you got one more question for me or what? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask who was the biggest influence in your life? Who, uh, did you have anyone in your life who really, made such a difference uh, in your career, possibly even encouraging you to seek higher education? Um, I, you know, I, and I, I think it was the first captain and I, and I still, I still see him occasionally. He's 76 now. Um, but I, I, my first captain in the job, and I always tell him when I was in training, I'd say, Hey, look, this is the best time of your career. The first four or five years, you're going to have a blast. You're going to have, you're going to get to see a lot of new things. You're going to, you're going to be able to try to get in the busiest companies, enjoy yourself. I said, because the, you know, life comes into play. You got family, you got kids, you get married and it, everything begins to change a little bit. But I said, when you come out of the gate, normally they're your younger crowd, single. I said, you're going to have a great time. But I, I, uh, I, I, I was at that time in my career. Uh, he was, uh, he, he had a, uh, undergraduate, um, uh, associates in fire science, um, a bright guy really kind of challenged us. We went through all kinds of training and he was pretty kind of low key. Uh, and, and you could always go to him and he would, he would have a logical conversation with you and kind of get you on track. And yeah, that first company officer, he was, a, he still was a great guy. I mean, you know, um, but I think, I think he was the, he was the one. Yeah. That's great. We have to, we all have to have them and, uh, you know, because they, they, they make us better. And yeah. with that comes the last question, chief, how are you becoming better? How are you working to be better? Um, you know, this, this doctorate program that's rolling, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not at that level. I'm looking at going back and maybe either going through an emergency management or um, uh, maybe this doctor in, in fire. So um, I'm looking at it and, um, and I, uh, my boss will probably hear this podcast and she'll beat up on me and say, you need to enroll. <laughs> but, uh, and she said that before, it's all good. But um, yeah, I'm I'm looking at that. So I mean, you know, actually going back to school, working through that program, um, yeah, it should be fun. I, I, I think I'm I think I'm headed in that direction. Oh, that's awesome to hear. I mean, not only are you developing curriculum, you're taking curriculum to yeah. just continually yeah. uh, drive to to be better, to educate yourself, and you know, said it so many times, but I'm gonna say it again because that's what we're all about here on the show, Better Every Shift. If you have uh, been listening to us, just a reminder that you can actually watch us um, on our YouTube channel. You can also see us on firerescue1.com. You can email us with any questions, concerns. If you think we're on something or onto something, email us at bettereveryshift at firerescue1.com. We uh, would really love to have you rate, review, and share the show with your crew and your department and and those that you think could benefit from um, the leaders that we we are able to interview like chief here, take to heart what, uh, like what chief pageant was saying is you're never too old to learn. You should try to do it every single day. Keep applying yourself, apply what you learn and, uh, good things will come of it. Sometimes you may not recognize them right away, but all those other intangibles at some point will come into play. Most importantly, everybody make sure you learn something, do something and share something to make you and those around you better every shift. Thanks for listening, everybody.